The world is divided into developed nations, developing nations, less developed countries. So definitely there is a difference in the wealth distribution that occurs. How do we actually calculate how this wealth distribution exists? We have a very simple measurement which is known as Gini's coefficient which is a measure of understanding this inequality. So Gini's coefficient was first given by Corrado Gini in 1900. 12 when he wrote his paper variability and mutability under this paper he was trying to explain that practically if the inequalities or the equalities are there the value of Gini coefficient would vary but this Gini coefficient would be within the range of 0 to 1 that means there are let's say five people who are there each of these people or five people have let's say five dollars in hand okay so that means the wealth is perfectly distributed so i say there is perfect equality a very simple example and when there is a perfect equality the guinea's coefficient would turn out to be zero but what would be the case if there are five people and all of these five dollars are not distributed to five different people but only one of them has 25 dollars the others have none of it what would be the scenario then it would be a case of perfect inequality so if i see practically the range of guinea's coefficient should vary from zero to one which is perfect equality where everyone has equal amount of wealth that is distributed to extreme case where only the wealth is concentrated in the hands of few but theoretically i can have a negative uh, value uh, a value where my income is negative that means a negative income or a negative wealth would associate the guinea's coefficient to a value over 1. So if the value turns out to be more than 1 in guinea's coefficient that means there has been a negative income or wealth. But as we said this is just a theoretical construct in the practical life we do not understand this as a uh, practical applied solution that is there. Now this Guinea's coefficient, a higher value of Guinea's coefficient, as I said it ranges from 0 to 1. The values let's say 0 0.8, 0 0.9, 0 0.7 are towards the higher end and these represents higher proportion of inequality. However, if the values are closer to 0, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, it appears that there is more of equitable distribution of wealth or there is lesser inequality that exists. So that is how we basically understand the Guinea's coefficient. What example we try to give, we have a simple example again here. Let's consider four of these people with equal amount of wealth that is there or every resident in the country so let's say it is a, a, a imaginary country where there are only four residents that are there and each of these four residents have same amount of income that is there in this case what would be the scenario the scenario as we already discussed you know it very well now is what the guinea's coefficient would turn out to be zero because all of them have same amount of wealth that is there but what would happen if this whole wealth is concentrated with one person, definitely you are correct. This is an example of perfect inequality. So in this case, Guinea's coefficient would turn out to be 1. So in the previous case where there was an equitable distribution, the Guinea's coefficient was 0. And in this case, the Guinea's coefficient where there is perfect inequality turns out to be 1. Now, I have a question for you. We have this wealth. I have a question whether we understand the wealth distribution with Guinea's coefficient or absolute wealth. Now, here is the catch. With Guinea's coefficient, we are only talking about distribution, not about absolute wealth. Let's take a good example of two nations, United States and Turkey. If I talk in terms of G, uh, the Guinea's coefficient, the Guinea's coefficient for both the nations are same. That means the wealth distribution in these two countries is at par. So if I say 
the values of Gini's coefficient, let's say, is around 0.4. That means there is the distribution of income which is moderately distributed between uh, the population, but that does not talk about absolute wealth in any case. So, if we go into the details of the GDP per capita, we would see Turkey has only half the GDP per capita in contrast to United States. That means in terms of absolute wealth that a person has or let's put it more simply, if you are earning, I am earning a salary, what would happen? Uh, the absolute amount of salary, let's say, is 10,000 in India or let's say 10,000 in Turkey. But the same salary in absolute numbers is 20,000 in United States. So the absolute terms, we would say United States, the individual income is much higher. But through Guinea's coefficient, we are not bothered about the absolute income or the absolute wealth that is there. We are only focusing on the distribution among the various segments of the society. So it's to understand the difference between the rich and the poor, the inequalities that exist in the society. So calculating Guinea's coefficient is a very interesting phenomenon. We have a quick table to understand here. Now, here X percentage talks about the population. Y percentage talks about the income. So 63% of the population has 18% of the income. Next 17% of the population has 22% of the income. 5% of the population constitutes 8% of the income and so on and so forth. So what I do is I can simply say the poorest 63% of the nation has merely 18% of the total wealth but the richest 3% only 3% of the population accounts for 16% of the national wealth. So definitely there is disparity that exists. How do we calculate Guinea's coefficient? That's the next question that I have for you. So what we do is we simply find the cumulative frequencies. Now when I say the cumulative frequency or the cumulative percentage, what we do is for the population, my first case the population is 63. What I do for the next case, the next case is 17, so I add 63 plus 17, so my value becomes 80. Then to this 80, I add 5 more, so it becomes 85. I add another 12, so it becomes 97. I add another 3, so it becomes 100. Now talk about the income, cumulative percentage of income again. So what I do is, I calculate the cumulative percentage of income. Now, first case it is 18. 18 plus 22 would give me 40. Then I would have 40 plus another 8 that is here would give me 48. 48 plus another 36 that would give me 84 and 84 plus another 16 would give me 100. So, I am able to calculate the cumulative percentage for income. Now I have the cumulative percentage for income and the cumulative percentage for population. What I do is I do a cross multiplication. Now remember what makes Guinea's coefficient so unique in calculation is I take the values and I divide it uniquely. What is my methodology to divide? In the first case it says x i minus 1 versus y. So that means i minus 1 that is this value. Okay. So one value prior in the case of population and the subsequent value in the case of income. So I take the values of 63 with 40, 80 with 48, 85 with 84 and 97 with 100. So with this I calculate x x i minus 1 that is the prior value of population multiplied with the subsequent value with the income the cumulative values okay but on the other hand when i am taking the next values what i am trying to do here i am trying to take the values of x in the original form that is there and for the y i am taking one previous value so it is 80 multiplied by 80 85 multiplied by 40 97 multiplied by 48 and 100 multiplied by 84. Now, we have done this calculation and I have the values that I have attained for the two values here. 
Now I have the Guinea's coefficient. So simply put, Guinea's coefficient is the summation of the values here. Now here, as we already did or calculated the values for the population, one value prior multiplied by the cumulative income and the summation of that, then I have the summation of the population multiplied by one value prior for the income, the difference of those multiplied by 1 by 10,000. So let's go back to the same value here. So what I do is I take this table and from this I have 23200 minus 17896. I subtract this value so it gives me 5304. Now I need to take the absolute value. Okay. So what I do is I take the absolute value but I have to take the values from the uh, xi, uh, y, i minus 1 in the first case. So I take the absolute value and it is 5304 5, divided by 10,000. And that gives me 0.53. So 0.53 is the Guinea's coefficient in this value. And that is marginally towards concentration or accumulation of the wealth that is C. So this is how we understand the Guinea's coefficient. And this is a simple formula to calculate the Guinea's coefficient. Now once we have done calculating the Guinea's coefficient, Definitely anything that we use have its own advantages and disadvantages. So let's go through the advantages and the disadvantages of Guinea's coefficient. Now Guinea's coefficient is important because what we can do is we can compare across population. We can compare across nations. It is also based on the ratio analysis. So we are trying to take the ratio and analyze it. And since the values lie between 0 to 1, it's very very simple to interpret and understand it and more importantly since I am taking the values at different points of time I am able to analyze the inequality and the changes in inequality over time. So that is one of the added advantages of Guinea's coefficient. But all these advantages are based on four basic important principles. First is it is independent of the high and the low earners in the society. Howsoever high or low earners are there, it is not dependent on it. It is also not dependent on the size of the economy. How big the economy is, how small the economy is, it's about the kind of variation in the distribution. So it's independent of the size of economy. It is independent of the way you are measuring it. And it is also independent of the size of the population. Besides this, the most important thing about Guinea's coefficient is it helps us understand or it satisfies the transfer principle. What does that mean? If the income is transferred from let's say a rich nation to a poor nation, then in that scenario, the income distribution would be equal and therefore it is satisfying the concept of transfer and it provides a outlook for an egalitarian society where education, income, wages are some of the parameters that would be considered at its front end. So therefore, Guinea's coefficient is definitely advantageous, but it does come with certain disadvantages. The first important disadvantage is we are able to explain that there is inequality that is existing in the society, but why? We do not explain the reason for the same. Now, this inequality could be due to unequal distribution of wealth. It could be accumulation of the wealth by a certain segment of the society. It could be due to corrupt policies. It could be due to government policies. So that reason is not being able to, uh, we are not able to explain the reason why there is inequality. Also, it ignores the life cycle events. What does that mean? A person's income, let's say uh, I am earning X amount today. So my income is ought to change throughout the life. And that change of an individual income that is taking place is not considered under the Guinea's coefficient. So for an individual, whatever income you have considered, you would take that as a parameter, but it is in ignoring any kind of life cycle events that there could be an increase, there could be a decrease next month or next six months. So therefore, it is 
one of the important disadvantages and as we said it does not measure the inequality which is due to opportunity so poor nations can be poor because of the political setup that exists there but we are not able to measure that as we already said the reasons for inequality we are not able to explain so that is one of the major disadvantage now this Gini's coefficient, if I'm trying to do an aerial analysis or an explanation of that, that can happen through Lorentz curve. Lorentz curve is a way of graphically depicting the Gini's coefficient and this Lorentz curve is something that we would understand in the next lecture. So for this lecture, we were able to understand why there is uh, income distribution that, that differs how do we actually calculate the difference in the income distribution and the uh, the inequality how it is measured so that was about guinea's coefficient we would be joining you with many more lectures stay tuned have a wonderful day ahead